Last time on She Rules the Waves I got going organizing all the tasks and finally finalized the to-do list. I started some tasks but overestimated my ability to get stuff done before actually finishing one minor task. But no need to worry, I've got plenty more tasks to do. Hi. My name is Linus Jackson and I'm a sailor, musician and father of two. I bought my boat Sedna in Italy and have spent the last two seasons sailing her to her new home in the south of Sweden. It's been an incredible journey, but now it's time to roll up the sleeves and get her ready for the adventures to come. Hey people, it's a pretty nice day today. Um, I am heading towards Sednap, but I'm gonna make a stopover by Åsa and her boat, the Sea Eagle, of Örna. Just to say uh, hi and uh, grab a cup of coffee. So, let's get ready for some boat work. Okay. Oi, Sean. Ute på båten eller på... Ja, på båten. På båten? Ja. It was a nice little coffee break. Um, it's actually a pretty nice day today. Uh, it's almost Easter and time really flies when you do uh, don't do boat work. Um, but I mean, excuses aside, let's do it. Yeah, so Although a little windy, I hope you can hear me, um, I've decided that this is a fine day and I should uh, just clean up the cockpit and get rid of a bunch of stuff that's in the way. So to make it easier to do some boat work, so uh, let's clean it up. Okay, so I'll just come right out and say it. This day was not the successful day that I hoped it would be, but in the end I actually got out of it with a clear mind and a new focus. But to get there I had to tackle some ill-advised project and mull it over with a marina neighbor and then with some of my best friends. I'll still show you some of it, because if I skipped all the failures it wouldn't be very educational, since failures in my experience is unfortunately a very big part of boat work. Okay, so I just got rid of all the stuff that was lying around here so it gets a little roomier in here. Makes it easier to keep working on the hard dodger. But first, over to something completely different. Okay, so um, my contacts helped me to weld this um, kind of stand that will, is supposed to fit the wind generator. It's definitely a temporary solution because it's going to be mounted back here, kind of like this. Which of course means that it is going to be in the way for the, uh, the missile. It's made of scrap pieces that it had left, so I got it for really cheap. And um, it is basically just to test the windmill and see if it is actually generating anything. As I'm fighting the steel here, I'm already considering that this mounting, no matter how temporary, is probably a bad idea and a waste of time. But I do have to test the wind turbine somehow. Okay, so there is a little problem here. These are the two for the most ones, the aft ones are in there and they actually hit this little beam. So uh, I assume I could get a little nut in there, but then they have to be shorter. And so these were, these were too long. On a couple of shorter ones, I will try. Hopefully that would do. So I'll just dry fit it now and then uh, we'll see. I'm sure it will work with a tiny bit of violence. Still hits the bottom. But instead of making them shorter, I will probably just put another couple of spacers in there. It 
to dry fit, so I don't want to put them in there too hard. Go downstairs, check. Well, let's just say I wasn't overjoyed. And then my friends came to visit. It's the sunset, and I'm here with my consultant, Eric and Tossa. <laughs> and uh, as I expected, they told me that I am a nutcase and that I have to uh, reconsider. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Let's see. Yeah, as I said in the beginning, these projects did not at all go the way that I planned, but my friends helped me realize that I need to prioritize the stuff that needs to get done. The hard dodger, for example, is not crucial right now. The spray hood can still be patched up for another summer, and since I don't have a solid design for the enclosure either, I think that the smart thing is to experiment with that this season, and hopefully have an idea of what I want and what works later on. Hey buddy, hey buddy buddy buddy. Okay, so I'm back in Sednam and as you saw, I had a couple of consultants to help me to figure out what to do next. And the first thing I've decided to do is to change the hard dodger to fix dodger instead. Yeah, I'll just patch it up as good as I can. I will fix the zippers and I will try to uh, build a prototype for... Uh, the cockpit enclosure um, and then we'll see we'll take it from there so uh, a lot of sewing going on what I want to do here of course is to just restitch these uh, zippers uh, and I got this uh, speed stitcher to try to do it and if there's not enough fabric or the fabric is too bad I also bought this webbing that we can use but I'm not sure if I have to use that. We'll try without first. Then we'll see. So this is the first time I do this, but as I understand it, you uh, put the needle through, pull the thread through, and this huge wax thread, because it's not gonna break this time. Then pull it back and put it through once more. And now, I'm not sure if you can see this, but now you take the thread and pull it through this little eye and then back. Yeah. And then you just keep doing that over and over and over again until you're done. Yeah, I'm very good at this, as you can see. It's not at all fiddly. I'm sure I will get the technique. A couple of stitches. And then in the end, when you're done, Um, you just back up a couple of stitches, just as you would do on a sewing machine. Go back. And just keep doing the same thing. Back a few and then back again. Yeah, you know, back and forth like you do on a sewing machine. So let's see if this actually works. It does. For now, anyway, we'll see how long that would hold. All right, so now I gotta do the same thing. That one's good. On this one, and on that one, and on that one, and on that one. Yay, fun. 
So the priority change is partly due to the fact that I haven't gotten my permanent uh, spot in the marina yet for the summer season, which means I'm probably going to have to move in a week or so from this spot. And to be able to do that, I need, of course, my engine. So I will start with the engine service. And part of that is to figure out how I will be able to charge my 48 volt battery bank from the engine alternator. So I will put that up there. Okay, I am uh, trying not to blind you here, uh, but one thing that I haven't really showed you, well, I guess I did back in the canals. I tried to figure out a way to get the uh, alternator from the uh, engine, uh, which is 12 volt, to uh, step up and charge my lithium bank to 48 volt. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it work. It was really dodgy, but now I am going to try with an MPPT and see if that works. I have to excuse the noise here, but what it means is that I connected my uh, 12 volt batteries to this Chinese real cheap step up converter. And I also have a automatic fuse on that. So that should output about 56 volts. And if I put it in here in the MPPT, that should work. At least I'm hoping it does. I connected the battery to the MPPT Smart Solar. Let's check the app. Okay, so the app shows the voltage coming in from the battery, but uh, of course nothing else because we haven't connected any PVs. And in this case, as I said, my plan is to connect, instead of the solar panels, I'm planning to connect the Chinese step-up converter that I have that translates the 12 volt batteries to 56 or something like that volts. Let's try it. So what should happen now, of course, is that the voltage there is supposed to jump up when I turn this switch on. And it does. And uh, then the question is if it actually will charge. And if not, why not? Yeah, there's a small charge. Okay, so what I want to do now is essentially get the battery state of charge to drop down a little so it actually needs charging. Uh, and it definitely will because I have the heater on. Um, and then after a while, I will try to start that uh, PV again, uh, the, the step up converter and see if it actually charges. And if it does, it should look like uh, another solar panel. So I got to keep that in mind. The input on the MPPT from the step up converter has to be five volts above what the battery voltage is at the moment. Otherwise it won't charge. That's just the Victron settings. Uh, but now it is, and as you can see, we get 42 watts, <laughs> which is really not that much, but it's better than nothing. So um, the point of this, of course, is that I should be able to, to charge the uh, 48 volt batteries while driving by engine. So it's not supposed to uh, to charge just from the battery, just for the fun of it. So um, yeah, let's see if that works once I get the engine started, of course. Well, getting the engine started turned out to be a more delicate issue than I had first envisioned. But more about that next week. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for following our adventures. I would be very happy if you could give this video a like and give me a holler in the comment section. Check out our social media or visit our Patreon page, where you can choose to join for free and be part of our discussions, or join as a paid member for as little as two dollars or euros a month, and get ad-free videos in advance, as well as other special perks. But with that said, I still appreciate you being here either way. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button and the bell, and until next time, take care.